Hi guys, this is my another video on organization and expression of immunoglobulin genes. I'm just going to do a quick summary of this rearrangement, how it happens, and I'm going to talk about different ways diversity can be created. Um, so this is a segment of this kappa light chain, and I'm just showing one V kappa variable kappa and one of J kappa. There are way more of these. And first thing that happens is they are aligned in like nice way by recombinase enzyme and after that one strand is clipped off by this RAG1 and RAG2 proteins and these are these are the recombinase enzymes and after that both of these strands are clipped off and a hairpin is formed on our coding sequence again coding sequence is our genes and this is our signal sequence and after this this here pin is cut randomly and then p nucleotides are added and just for heavy chain n nucleotides are added after that and finally these two are joined together and the signal sequence falls off and in this case the signal sequence doesn't fall off and is just like in a line um, so let's just think of different ways diversity is created now one way is in one of my earlier videos I showed you guys those mathematics by how we can generate um, something times 10 to the power 6 different types of antibodies and for that we are going to write down combinatorial way so basically computation right so we have different v we have different d we have different j and different v's can mix up with different d's can mix up with different j's and if we mix them up in different ways we can get up to um, 10 to the power 6 but i told you guys like we won't be able to get 10 to the power 6 because some of those vk's or some of those vd and they are, they are pseudogenes and they don't code for any proteins and next reason why we won't have 10 to the power 6 is uh, when we did the calculation, we assumed that each and every V is equally like to mix and match with each and every D and that's not true. Some V's are more likely to recombine than others and some are like never going to recombine. And next way is P and N nucleotides. And nucleotide addition. And I talked about this. In my previous video that addition of PN and nucleotides it generates diversity too and third it's called junctional flexibility and I'm going to talk about what this means flexibility so we saw that in this step so in our final step so these are clipped off our NNP nucleotides that are added already right here and this is going to go join over here so what happens is that when our signal sequence these two they join they join perfectly so if there's like a A nucleotide at this end and there's like T nucleotide this A is just going to join to this T but what happens is that when this joins to this it's not a perfect joining let's say if there's A T at this end um, there's AT again at this end so instead of making AT AT like these two nucleotides this might like fall off and it might be like something before and then AT and that generates variability too um, so for example let's say I have like two strand I'm just going to write the nucleotide in one strand so let's say I have um, here GAC GAC I'm just making it up and this is my coding sequence and then here and my another coding sequence let's say I have GAT GAT so instead of making and joining up and joining and making GAC GAG GAT GAT it would maybe make up let's say like this person would just like fall off and it would make up uh, G A C G A G 
G A T and the three this is going down so we could think that something else could happen right here now if like just three three nucleotides fall off then our reading frame is preserved it's G A C first G A Z and G A T afterwards this this is not going to be one amino acids but let's say for example only G falls off what will happen so this was our original reading from this 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 and this so if just g falls off it's going to be g a c g a z a t z a t something our reading frame is disturbed and this can lead to a uh, formation of stop codon somewhere along the way and if our reading frame is disturbed it's called non-productive rearrangement non-productive rearrangement but if our reading frame is preserved it's called productive rearrangement and this junctional flexibility this process occurs during rearrangement and this also adds up to diversity because but the signal sequence they match up perfectly like this to this the nucleotides are just going to be in line nothing falls off and there's next thing and it's called somatic hypermutation and somatic hypermutation it also results in diversity of um, antibodies and the way it occurs it this is not something that occurs during recombination so let's say our recombination is already done uh, we have our VDJ sequence and we have our heavy chains here um, so somatic hypermutation is in our VDJ sequence some nucleotides randomly uh, switch to something else so let's say if we have a ATZ ATZ here maybe this G something else would come in this place of G so let's say our A would come in this place so this is called somatic hypermutation and this hypermutation usually happens in CDR region the complementary determining region that's where it happens and it happens naturally so an important thing to take out from this is and after this happens so let's say if like this nucleotide sequence if this makes up an antibody that is uh, more reactive to the antigen than the antibody made up by this previous sequence then this should be selected so an important thing to take out from this is so let's say I have a mouse over here and I inject this with an antigen and um, it makes up antibodies after a week I inject it again with the same antigen and it makes up antibodies so what would happen is because of this somatic hypermutation the antibodies produced on the second time are going to be slightly different from the antibodies produced on the first time and the antibodies produced on the second time they are going to be more reactive to the antigen than the antibodies produced on the first time and that's due to somatic hypermutation and we don't even have to immunize the mouse two times if we just immunize the mouse once um, then if you just keep waiting antibodies that are produced after several days are going to be more reactive to the antigen than antibodies produced recently and the same reason somatic hypermutation um, so these are four different ways one is combinate real way so we just have so many v d and j reasons that combination of one v with next d with next day is going to give us a lot of diversity PN and nucleotide addition, junctional flexibility, and somatic hypermutation. Thank you for watching my videos.